So I know that. Okay, so I need to do the thing. No, they can't. It's just starting right now. It's, uh, it's all a little bit wishy-washy, mate. Uh, uh, I don't understand anything. Welcome back to the Wild Times, the greatest show in the world, according to all three listeners that we have. Oops, I didn't mute the YouTube, so it sounds really Christ good. Christ almighty, and we're off to a fantastic start. <laughs> oh, Brosners, welcome. This is the Wild Times, episode number 54. It is the one-year anniversary of when we started this ridiculous show. We're very excited to be here. We're going live tonight because we did plan on doing it in person, but it didn't work out for various reasons that we will discuss on the pod tonight. But if you don't know me... I'm your not-so-humble host, Forrest Galante, the broologist. Joined by me is Retep, who wears the same hat every pod, no matter what. Don't understand why. Um, who is the professor, PhD podcast extraordinaire. What's up, Retep? Hey, guys. Uh, people love this hat, first of all. It says sugar in Spanish. People Thank love you. this painting right here. I've added a new one. We can talk about that later. Pat, you look terrible today. Forrest, you have a potato head. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Patrick, how are you? He's getting off to a fiery start. He's drinking mango claws and all. Well, I was, I, I was just feverishly shoveling uh, sea salt and vinegar almonds into my face. So now I have almond tell. skins all over my teeth. Uh, it's a bad <laughs> idea to do it right before a podcast. I can smell you from here. <laughs> you smell gross. We've got... Uh, Bunch of people in the YouTube, a bunch of the regulars. Hey, everybody. So cool that you guys came to listen to our bullshit. Yeah, you guys do do this for some unknown reason. It's very weird. Don't understand. What are you why. talking about, unknown reason? We're not that It's funny. my charisma. It's your looks for us. Hmm. And uh, Pat, I don't really know why they want you here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep it rolling. Okay. What do you got stepping? I, uh, I just poured myself a nice <clears throat> 5 15 p.m house pour of ice cold Cabernet Sauvignon, which is controversial. But ice cold? cold? What's the matter with you? That cold is very controversial. Yeah. Mate, nobody in their right mind does that. Is that just a to be cool thing? Yes. When I'm home alone uh, with like no literally. one watching, I, I make my red wine ice There's cold. There's thousands because... of people watching, mate. That's <laughs> true. Turn your smugness down a little bit. <laughs> um, that's funny. I, uh, I'm drinking a, not a white claw, but something similar. I forgot what kind of sparkling juice claw thing it was, but I poured it in a glass because it sat open on my desk for a while, and I thought it would look classier if I was in a glass with oh, it. Oh, I thought you had a G&T going. Per I huge. should have, but I, I, I ran out of time to pour one, so I just copped out and went for a canned drink. <laughs> Peter, what are you drinking? <laughs> I don't know, man. I was at the store, and I was trying to get, like, white claw, but they only had the 12 and it was $20. I was like... I'm not spending $20. I'm drinking six of these. So I got these Vizzy hard seltzers. I, I don't know what this is. It's fine. I'll probably have heartburn and shit myself later, but cheers, okay. mates. Good for you. Cheers. Good for uh, you. By the way, a lot of people in the YouTube saying that my camera quality is by far the best tonight. Retep, That's yours, I'm looking at it. It is dog shit. Looks like you yeah. smeared Vaseline on the lens of whatever <laughs> Vizio brand laptop you have. Better? He is a about PC this? guy. It's it's heinous. You're yeah, supposed to be the te- you're supposed to be the technical wizard. What can I oh, do no. about the terrible internet in Reseda? <laughs> I sorry. wish I wish tonight that I had your garbage stream quality because I'm I'm in poor form today. I drank an entire boot last night um, of beer, <laughs> which was seven beers poured into one large shoe that I did not did want. Did you finish that thing? I yeah. saw you, the video. You finished finished that? it in about thirty minutes, oh which you know like. I was trying to do it in a chug, and that just didn't happen. But I took the whole thing down in about 30 minutes and then had to be driven home like a child. Um, but, yeah, you, no, there's today's no been way, slow. There's no way in hell. That was just for show. There's no way you chugged seven beers. You ask, can't handle two. Ask my entire rugby team that bought it for me, and they will validate that I went through the whole boot. It was awful. I feel very Wouldn't. bloated and puffy and slow today. I'm not enjoying any part of my day. You, you guys look like all of those things too, except guys, this part, and that drink's gonna make you feel yeah. You guys real nice, and uh, all the Brosners listening are at the highlight of my day. You guys are making me feel better. Um, man, cheers. Well, it sounds like they're all getting boozy too. Lots of people talking about what they're drinking. This is a proper 
YouTube Live. I love that you guys it's, are playing along. It's we haven't even mentioned it yet, I don't think, but it, it's been a year. This is we, this is episode uh, fifty two. For shut up, Pat. We also haven't talked about it enough. This has been one year. We have this giant community of Brosners, the Wild Bunch, whatever you want to call yourselves. I can't believe that I've been able to put up with both of your bullshit nonsense for 52 weeks in a row. Uh, Brosners, you're the only thing that make this worthwhile. These guys are okay, but they do a lot of glad handing and ass kissing to one another while making fun of me. You guys are the only ones that like me, and I like that. So cheers to one year, mates. Thank you for fucking cheers. joining us for this. Cheers. I mean, Love you that. cannot fucking beat it. You know what? So, Given that this is the one year yeah, anniversary, ahead, I was just going to say, why don't we kick it off? There's some there's some good Brosner DMs floating around. Um, yes, man. Let's do it. The one that I want to start with, I don't know if he, she, they is listening, <laughs> but at Hesjo1 says, I did it. I have found the last one. Gentleman and Retep, which is well done. I have just Very procured nice. the last known box of Brute Fruit. Not Fruit Brute. He wrote Brute Fruit. In a hard-won <laughs> battle on eBay. Now, I don't have it in my hands Come yet. Come on. But it's supposed to be one of the 2013 special edition Halloween run. I just need to know how to get this bad boy into Forrest's hands and what I need to pack for the expedition. Mm -mm. I'm sweating bullets over here, Hess. Did you really <laughs> Did you really get a box of Fruit Brute? If so, I'm going to hold up my end of the bargain. You're going to have to come out either to California and do something fun with us or go on a little trip. Because I said it. I put it up there. I got to know if this is real. We need proof. I don't know how you're going to share it. I want to see this box of Brute Fruit. Joel Hess is on the chat. So he is in the chat. He's probably thrilled that you're uh, talking about his fruit Dude, if Forrest gets the fruit brute and I don't, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'm just going Fun's to steal end. it. Yeah. No, I, I'm just going to steal it next time I'm at your place. Dude, we'll get some whole milk. We'll put on some Saturday morning cartoons and sit down together and just watch it. Oh, it I'm willing milk. to take the food poisoning to eat a seven, eight-year-old box of cereal. For sure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's fruit brute. Dude, what a treat. Joe yeah. has for the win. Yeah, uh, that's a hell of a call. Just want to give a shout out. One of the Brosners just nicknamed himself the Bro Anthologist or wow, something like well that. Played. Bor, Bor Anthologist. Uh, and also, we have a listener from Sweden. It's 2 30 a.m. Axel listening. He's going to stay up late for this YouTube live. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get into a little wildlife for those who are going to listen to this on iTunes. Forrest, favorite yeah. story of this week, the 52nd week of our podcast, the one year anniversary. Mm, what you good. Got? Night. question hmm, 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 hmm. favorite got story I've got, there's a few good weeks there are, sorry good weeks there's a few good stories number one for me this week and i've got a very spe specific reason why is a, a, the new york times put out an article called the Yo ocean's youngest monsters are ready for their glamour shots and what it is is a collection of incredible fish larva photography and wt willie's going to pull up some pictures here and it shows some relatively common, some less common fish, awesome looking fish that are um, oh, wow. in their larval state, right? So for those that don't know, when a fish, for most fish in the ocean, they're pelagic spawners, meaning they have the, you know, they, their offspring just drifts out into the ocean and they go kind of like a, imagine a tad, an egg turning into a tadpole, turning into a frog. Well, these fish kind of do that, right? They, they, they go out into the ocean currents, and they have these incredible larval stages. Now, the one you're looking at that W.T. Willie just pulled up is uh, juvenile lionfish, an invasive species from the Caribbean. Everybody kind of knows about them. They're from the Indian Ocean originally. Look at it. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. So yeah. I started to look at this article, right? You're, and I'm getting to why this is my favorite one. And there's some pictures that are mind-blowing. W.T., do me a favor. Pull up the hairy goosefish larva, um, the picture that came out of Hawaii. Um, so another beautiful, beautiful fish picture, this thing called this hairy goosefish. It's got the craziest looking larva. Look at that. That's a fish guys. Oh, um, what? Dude. unbelievable. A great yeah. beard. Hey, what do you, what are those things for us? I mean, it's not hair, is it? No, it's, uh, I actually don't know to be quite honest. I mean, it's okay. some kind of appendages. It's like a tentacle like appendage. 
Um, you know, the hairy goosefish as an Goose adult, fish. and Will can maybe pull up a picture of an adult one if he's not typing too furiously. Um, <laughs> they they do have like you know weird kind of appendages, and they look very odd. But that's insane. I mean, that looks like an old guy's beard. Um, and and, off. And, that's mental. Yeah. And there's all kinds. There's ribbon fish uh, that were pictured off of Palm Beach, and just these crazy, <laughs> crazy looking larval fish versions. But the reason that this story was my favorite one is, Will, if you're in the New York Times article before you s- switch screen, go up and to the left, and don't, don't 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 say what the name of the fish is. I'm just gonna let you guys look at it. It's got the long phalanges, kind of looks like hair. Um, can you pull that pick up, Will? John, well, John we, Davenport says he, it looks like his scrotum. Well, while nope, we wait go, for Will, uh, Billy Weigel, that one. Billy yeah, Weigel said in the chat that the hairy That's goose one. fish looks like what's up, whatever's under Peter's hat. Yes, very accurate <laughs> indeed. His toupee. Um, <laughs> but I'll, this is why. It's a wig, mate. Get it right. This little animal right here wow. is why it's my favorite article of the week. You guys taking a look at that? Yeah, not as impressive things... as the other two fish, but very cool, wouldn't you agree? No, it's pretty impressive. It looks like a dope. like an ethereal spirit animal of some type. Mm-hmm. Ethereal, now, let me... if English is your first ethereal, language. Ethereal, yeah. I'm very so... fervent about the way I speak, mate. <laughs> so, all right, if you could come up with the most ridiculous name for a fish, and this was its larval form, what would you call it? I'd call it. I know, an angel uh... fish. God, that's lame. I would literally the name of the fish would be it would, ha, it would just the word would be three O's. It would be called the ooh fish because <laughs> it looks like that's what it's saying. Ooh. That's good. Yeah. Well, the actual name of this fish is Will. Can you scroll down? A bony eared ass fish. That is the name <laughs> of this fish. And when I saw that, I lost my shit. I literally start spat my drink out because I know about a lot of fish and i have never heard of a bony eared ass fish and this is a sure real not, thing man. somebody named this fish that's good that's stuff. not it um, that was my nickname in uh in grade school yeah that is a bony eared ass fish and i was just so stoked <laughs> to find that and know that that was there will don't worry man you're you're good i i just i was gonna show the name because it had the scientific name but i just couldn't believe it i was blown away I went down a whole rabbit hole of looking at bony-eared ass fish online. By the way, don't type that into Pornhub. Um, and it was just, it was wild. So yeah, that was my favorite. That was my favorite find of the week for sure. So for those of you who only listen, Ratep behind him has two paintings that look like they were quite possibly done by toddlers who were smearing paint around with their hands. One of them, I believe, is supposed to be a tree. It looks very much like a stalk of broccoli. Have you ever seen a stalk of broccoli growing like a tree out of a grassy knoll with a large, thick brown stem? I haven't, Fuck and off, I maybe. am also not seeing that in your painting. But what are you talking about? This <laughs> one right here? People are bidding for it. Uh, Justin McRae currently has the leading bid, $506 for the broccoli, <laughs> the broccoli. painting. I was talking to some <laughs> of the brokers. They're calling it the broccoli painting, <laughs> FYI. In the d- I was talking to some of the brosters in the Discord earlier. I told him I just want one meager Bitcoin for the painting. Just one. <laughs> just one yeah. tiny little Bitcoin, and I'll sell it to you, but only the digital version as an NFT. I'll keep the original. Thanks. Can someone uh, okay. let's get on it? Let's get okay. on a tangent here for a second. Can we, NFTs? Can we, what yeah. the fuck are what they? What is a tangent? What, what is a tangent? What is an NFT? I don't know what this is. It's like all over the internet at the moment. It's like a painting or something, but it's online. That's Pretend, that's what I'm saying. Field that's, of expertise. I know Patrick doesn't know what it is because he doesn't know how to do email yet. So, what so is an NFT? Ritev? From my understanding, all I know about NFTs is that Banksy did made a painting and then sold it as an NFT, which is like a digital version of it, like the original digital version that's on some kind of a blockchain, so it's logged, so you can prove that you own this. Yes. And then he burned the physical copy. Yes. So that I guess that was all that existed. So from my understanding, you can like I could sell this this right here. I could keep it, but give sell somebody like the sell somebody the digital first rights sure. or some shit like that. Here's here's so, an easy way to describe it. NFT okay. NFT stands for non fungible token. It utilizes okay. blockchain technology, the same technology that all of the cryptocurrencies use, right? But yep. what it is is it's a non 
it's an asset that only exists digitally. So this is huge in, tr in sports trading cards and sports okay. trading cards. There's been a huge boom in the market. So all my fucking stupid cardboard baseball cards that I've been carding from place to place <laughs> since I was a kid are worthless, but they're selling. So ex an example would be like a Kevin Durant, you know, shooting a three pointer. Yeah. And there's only a hundred of them, which is part of the blockchain. So there could never be more than a hundred and people are paying $50,000 to essentially have a GIF. Yeah. What? Why? Exactly. Why can't you just right click know. save to desktop? I mean, isn't that what you do? Don't you just right click save to desktop and then it's yours? Like that's Listen, how it's like a currency. It's, I, it's I, I don't care what it is. I want to get in on this fucking scam because people are <laughs> making millions. All right. I don't care. So this confused. is the thing. I don't understand how anything works, but I want to make money off of it. So Brosners, let us know how we can, I don't know. Is it a scam? Is it real? I want to do it. But guys, somebody suggested something in the chat What's that? that is pretty amazing. Okay. The, the fruit brute box that, they, that he bought oh on boy. eBay could be sold for billions of Bitcoin as an NFT. I think we should that's, do it. That's a good fruit, 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 fruit. That's a good call. But uh, we have the there, there proof was like now, nine by the words way. in that sentence that hurt my brain. Like there was just we so many things. We have the proof. Wow. It was a segue. Shut up, Forrest. We have the proof. That is the proof box. So boss fruit, fruit. boss Delphinus in the chat, who I may be a new Brosner, um, says NFTs use way too much energy and are super duper bad for the environment. You really shouldn't use them. I guess because the way that blockchain stuff happens, it takes a ton of electricity to generate the code is what I'm assuming he's talking about. Not something I'd thought about, but interesting I, point. I, I don't, I'm so confused by all of it, but let's talk Fruit Brute for a second. Hey, Joe <laughs> Hess, if you really got that man, which it sure looks like you did, congrats. Cause I'm not kidding. You're, you're coming, you're coming to do something with Patrick Ritep and I. Dude, if you know what he means. Dude, bro that and Roberts. Deal. Bro and Roberts says he sent it to you on Instagram. He's got an original box, not the Wait, reprint. No, this is no, this so wild. Look, just let's just start How an empire. Confused? Let's go. Let's go like AMC. You know what? GameStop on this. Let's get Fruit Brew back. You guys can all I go agree. on trips, <laughs> dude. I have to. I keep pinning things because it's so funny. KH Outdoors wants to know if Forrest aged thirty years this week, and man, I agree. Does, Does it look that way? Did you dye what your hair that? gray? Dude, What's going I, on? I, Are you I've Ill? been on a bender. Like, I'm not kidding, man. I, <laughs> I, I went out Tuesday night. It was my birthday on Wednesday. I went out Tuesday night with the boys, the rugby team. Wednesday, we went to the lake all day, played hooky, destroyed my phone, drank a case of White Claw. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I played rugby and was like, all right, I'm getting back into it, like running, going to sweat it all out. Then they made me chug a boot. I've just been on, like, a bender. Like, I... I yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know what don't to tell you. I'm you sure look, look like, like fucking hell. I, I do. I can see myself. Like, you know how we were saying people <laughs> want to get plastic surgery once they watch themselves on Zoom? I, I just want to fix all of this right now. Like, if there's, like, give me a face swap because this is a mess you, what's going on. You know how you can fix it? It's very easy. Just chug faster, mate. It's called hair of the dog. You're fine. Listen, Drink listen, faster. Guy, You'll get a little did, color did, in your face. I'll need to hear this from you. I don't know. You, you mean nothing to me with your comments. I saw how you shotgunned a beer. It was clownish. Um, By the way, dude, I made up for it. I oh yeah, that, that was, you. that was clown time. Just a real quick aside <laughs> while we're, while we're talking oh about NFTs and weird collectibles, man. So the house I, I moved into like four months ago, whatever, when we moved in, so the dude who used to live here is like a big pro skateboarder and he's like friends okay. with, he's been around since he was like 16. He's like in his forties now. Right. So he was the previous dude who, who lived here. Okay. Yep. So when we moved in, one of the bathrooms has a toilet seat that has a bunch of like inscriptions and art carved into the toilet seat. And it says That's neck cool. face. It says neck face. I've I don't know what okay. neck face is. I thought that was just a drunk person doing something, right? It's a signature <laughs> of neck face. So I buy a replacement toilet seat. I'm going to pop that one off and toss it in the trash. Sure. Right. Like, Makes sense. Immediately, Christina's like, let's get rid of that fucking weird toilet seat. Of course. Yeah. I bought the wrong kind. It didn't have the right hinge. So then I just, I'm like, fuck it. I've tried. <laughs> so her friend comes over who's like super into like pop culture, Banksy, all this shit. Right. She comes out and goes, you realize that you have a fucking neck face toilet seat? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Neckface is a like Banksy type guy. Oh. Prints, prints of his art are selling for like between eight hundred and four thousand dollars for prints. 
What? Wow. I have an original neck face toilet seat that I don't know what it's worth. I'm going to figure out a way to have sell you it. It's this? worth zero after you sat on it, but yeah. Oh, I've sat on it. I've sprinkled pee on it when I forgot to put it up. I've done all that stuff. <laughs> Papa pee pee. Yeah, man. Well, Dude, I just that's typed nuts. in neck face toilet seat and nothing comes up on Google. So that's new. Dude, I, think I don't think he's ever clowned. done a toilet. You're getting clowned, bro. Dude. Bro, you're a moron. He was here partying Look with this dude. Look how angry you are, me calling you out on no, your bullshit. It's, it's a one of a kind. He's probably never made art it's on a toilet seat. It's not a one of a kind. This is absurd. Nasty neck face. He's got. I want this. You will look at a moron, Ratep. You're an idiot. I'd quit the podcast because you just said that. <laughs> you're so angry. I want the certificate of genuinity. Is that a word? It is. Yeah. Okay, you, you let's do a little it, more but... wildlife before we go yeah. too bonkers. So on the wildlife train <laughs> and the, the neck face Steve NFT train, because we are all over the place tonight. Yeah. Um, Brosner DM, Mitch Patek sent a message. So you guys know that, well, let's just read his message. Love the pod bros. In the spirit of Godzilla versus Kong, which I am very excited to watch, yeah, I good. want to know how many silverback gorillas the bros think it would take down a full-grown T-Rex. Now, I think this is a pretty good question. This is a fucking great question. Uh, huh. This is a very, very good question. Okay. Now let me now let me Patrick's ask you this. Patrick's going to do the math. Do the math, Patrick. No, no. I know how I, many feet. Math. How many? It's yeah. past, past math. math. I think there's a rule that we need to establish to this game. Okay. Are the do the gorillas have time to prepare, or is it they just come upon each other and it's an instant battle? I'm going to say <laughs> it's like no. This is a good question. This is a good question. I'm going to say in yeah, this hypothetical. Yeah. It is a troop of male gorillas. Like it's a bachelor bachelor pod that are hanging out and yeah. uh and, and boom, T Rex in the Congo. Go. That's it. For, hold on though. Quick quick question. Uh how big is a uh T Rex forest? Uh well I'm not a paleontologist, but it's somewhere in the like fifteen <laughs> to twenty foot <laughs> range. You're, you're a smart guy. The fifteen what? to twenty feet tall. So Okay. So so here we go. No, actually in height twelve feet, forty feet long. Estimated to weigh around between 12,000 and 15,000 pounds. <laughs> o- only 12 feet tall? Are you sure about that, Pat- Patrick? According to this. But that might be because okay. they kind of leaned forward, right? They, were, they never really I thought they were like 12,000. Yeah. No, they're 40 feet long, though, from head to tail. Yeah, it's big. Right, right, it's got right, a right. big tail. It can whip you with the tail. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How many yeah. pounds did you say? 15,000. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we're talking. Once you said that weight, I, I'm going a hundred minimum gorillas, a hundred men minimum. Okay, I'm gonna say that would be the least amount of gorillas that could take one out. Nah, that's that's nah. Come on. Okay. Uh, what do you what do you can, say, Patrick? Two. Two. Two gorillas. Here's why. Okay. There have been some Explain recent yourself. some recent. Uh, I knew you were gonna take bring this up. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a discovery, but some recent studies that have been done by various nerds that do this type of stuff, they discovered that based on the morphology of the T-Rex's bone structure and stuff, right, that was probably super slow. So they actually think that a T-Rex was not like the king of the fucking jungle, that it was most likely a scavenger that was capable of scaring other smaller animals away from a kill, but Mm -hmm. it was unlikely that it killed and, and ran down its own prey because it was so <laughs> lumbering and slow moving. Yep. So two gorillas are going to take this slow thing, figure it out, avoid the tail, avoid the jaws, and then rip it limb from fucking limb. There you go. Boom. We got I, can I interject? Got two. Uh, there's yeah. uh, a broster just made a very good point that I think we should all be aware of. And that is that a T-Rex weighs almost as much as forest on extinct or alive. Thank you, James. Back for <laughs> I missed that. that out. That's great. <laughs> I'm a couple say... people in the chat saying that what I just said have been debunked, uh, but the mm. thing I watched was very convincing with some very smart people. So I like I like their theory. So it wasn't a Wild <laughs> Times episode. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, they weren't just scavenging jungle potatoes. They're saying. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say Ooh. twenty based on very little. Now let's flip this on its head for a second. How many reteps to take down one gorilla? I mean, what age? What what age Retep? Retep, in his, Retep in, his, in his physical prime, which I'm going to say is like 31, I'm going to guess. 31? Are you yeah. mental? My physical prime was like 24. Whose when did physical you weigh prime the most, Retep? Retep, when did you nah, weigh the most? It's not about weight. It's about pure no. strength, mate. 
<laughs> Ritep hey, you know right now. How, how many? How many yeah, like, right are, now? Ritep's. How many right now? Ten thousand. Take down one gorilla. Ten. I got a bad leg. <laughs> it's. I, I would say no joke. Probably, like nine hundred. Because I think they would have to come in waves, and the gorilla would just sort of decimate them, and it would be right. like you're hoping that one Ritep gets in one shot before he kills right. that wave. Right. 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 So I'd say yeah. seven hundred. What are you 700. Saying? Okay. It went down it's, by 200. Okay. The, the real question we're going to ask here is how many reteps does the gorilla have to kill before the gorilla dies of exhaustion? That's the question we really have to ask ourselves. <laughs> right. Right? Listen, mate, if that there is. was, if there was a thousand of me, we, we could, we could coordinate so well that we could, have you ever seen star Wars again? I'll, I'll uh-huh. refer back to where they, where they lasso the legs of the giant robot thing and knock them over. A thousand of me, dude, we would use our brain power to take this T-Rex down. Maybe even two or three of me only with a rope. Uh, okay. I'm just saying. This is, you know, this is what people tune in for. They want hard science, and that's what we <laughs> give them. How many reteps, yeah. one gorilla, these are the facts. Uh, <laughs> hey, Forrest, so this yeah. was in the news. This caught my, my fancy since you and I okay. have spent some time in the Galapagos together. So a news Ooh, story I know coming, where this is going. Yep. coming out of the Galapagos. Uh, so they were at the uh, airport in Santa Cruz Island, right? It's mm-hmm. about to connect back through Ecuador, which is how you get to and from the Galapagos. It's a lovely trip. I recommend you spend a couple nights in Ecuador, too, because it's fun stuff. Um, Good place. Anyway, so... They're scanning, a, they're x-raying a suitcase. They see an irregularity. They're like, oh, shit, this is irregular. What, it may, this might be a bunch of boxes of fruit brute. So <laughs> they crack it open, and there it's are a hundred, comedy. listen to this, 185 baby Galapagos tortoises that are wrapped in plastic individually that were yep. being illegally smuggled out of the island, and they think they were caught naturally in the wild. Um, all but 10, all but 10 survived and were returned back to the mainland, but someone's fucking smuggling 185 baby Galapagos tortoises. I'd have to assume for the illegal pet trade, right? Has to be. Yeah. There's no other, uh, t- totally. It absolutely has to be. Um, I'm just looking it up because, so I used to go to these reptile super shows. There's used to have, there's one down in LA every year. Um, they're all over the place. And yeah. from my memory at the reptile super show, you used to be able to buy a species of Galapagos tortoise. I can't remember which one about the size of the one in the picture right now that will pulled up for 2,500 bucks for your pet. And this was like, this was like 10 years ago when I was still like going to these reptile shows and being like really into what stuff was there. So I imagine now they're easily four or five times that price. So to say the motive is unclear is ridiculous. Obviously this is for the illegal pet trade. Fuck that guy. Hope he rots in hell and jail at the same time. Don't do that. That's bad. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit, man. This is this is it's shit like this that makes me kind of just uh, you know hate human beings, including <laughs> myself and you guys. <laughs> All time Brosner Daniel Cool says in the chat, uh, if they got caught this time, I wonder how many times they had done it before. Straight up, right? No, because by the way, yeah, you don't sure. you don't smuggle 185 your first time. Your first exactly time, exactly right. Five. Yeah, 100%. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, straight up. And I wonder, you know, not to not to say that anybody's like shitty over there, but you're telling me, you know, if you live in the Galapagos, you serve, you know, beer at a at a tourist bar and somebody comes by and says, "Hey man, you know, help me round up these tortoises and I'll give you 500 bucks and, you know, talk to your uncle who works at the airport and I'll give him 500 bucks." Like, I wonder if there's a bit of a racket going on here. You know, more so than just this guy. And it's the one time that, you know, somebody wasn't on the payroll somebody, or somebody else who wasn't. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think anybody without some kind of inside track goes for 185 tortoises. Like I, I'd be terrified to try and take one. That's you true. know, like would, That's true. if I was like, oh, I'm going to smuggle a tortoise home. I'd be like, I'd be I'd be a mess of nerves going through the airport. <laughs> like you don't you don't just go for it with 185. Like, yeah, I think there's something else to it. Yep. Forrest, you should. You, Key Grif, Griffo says you should go undercover and bust some of these fuckers. You, get, you got the balls? You think you could do it? I got the balls. Unfortunately, me going undercover is probably a little, little That's tricky true. This, this time. It'll have to day be and Pat. Age. Yeah. It'll definitely no, have to I, be Pat. I'd love to do that. I'm Patrick and I actually talked I'm about a show. Yeah. <laughs> 
Patrick and I actually <laughs> talked about a show doing that, kind of busting wildlife crimes, because there's a lot of them out there. You know, I think that, you know, it's like any crime syndicate. Money talks, right? So if you, I mean, if I do it, it's going to get blown up. But if you're, if we have the, if you have the right person and they start going into these places and being like, hey, you know, how much for that? You know, how much for 20 of those? I think you're going to expose all kinds of shit. Wildlife trade is the third biggest illegal industry in the world. It's like $8 billion a year or something like that in illegal wildlife trade. I think it's drugs, sex trafficking, and wildlife trade in, in that order. Um, oh, wow. It's huge. huge. Yeah, it's wow. massive. I so, have no yeah. idea. No, the more people that want to go undercover and bust this shit up and try not to get murdered doing it, the better. Because I, I hate that kind of behavior, and I just I think it needs to blow up. I, I, the, I UN, the UN estimates uh, that the illegal wildlife trade is up to $23 billion dollars a year 23 billion yeah, yeah think about i got my dog from the rescue shelter he's a fucking prick but i choose to keep him <laughs> uh, that's all i'm saying none of my dogs have been smuggled if he was smuggled from somewhere i don't know why they smuggled him it was a big mistake <laughs> what a um, jerk. that's funny um, hey, I got so, a little, oh wait uh, so i got a question go ahead. oh sorry okay. go ahead no, no. I mean, and I don't know if we want to if we want to get too much into it, but somebody just did mention it in the uh, in the chat, and it's it's about our old pal uh, N.W. Are we, can Dude, we talk you about this? Are obsessed, of course. Who gives a shit? Okay, so You're we're talking about though. animal. We're talking about animal crime, and I want to be. Are we? Super, are we? Are we going here? Well, I just want to be careful how I phrase <laughs> everything because I'm not saying anything factual, right? This is all my opinion, our opinion. But some pictures were posted that that um, that were supposedly omitted from the series of pictures from the original card. We're talking about Neil Waters, by the way, and the Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia. All right. Uh, hold, hold on. They, hold on. Hold on. Right. Tap. Hold on a second here. OK. Yeah. All right. If you're a regular Brosner, you, you know what's going on. If you don't, if you aren't, here's the sitch. OK. A month ago. This guy, this news comes out of Australia. Thylacine spotted, right? There's this guy, he's rosy-faced, he's walking down a street, talking to his iPhone, sipping a beer, celebrating. He's found it. He's found the thylacine. This is huge. I get excited, I start tweeting about it. People are picking it up, the news is picking it up. Everybody's really excited. The guy says, guaranteed proof, coming out in two days, just wanted you all to be, know all to be known. Everybody starts freaking out. We start freaking out. Remember, guys, we got on the pod, we we're like, holy oh, yeah. shit, guys, this is going to be huge. Yeah, we're excited. 24 yep. hours later, uh, uh, and the guy, a gentleman by the name of Neil Waters, says, it's, I've sent it to Nick Mooney. Well, Nick Mooney's a colleague of mine, and so I, I email Nick straight away, and I'm like, what's going on? Is this real? Blah, blah, blah. Like, 10 hours later, comes out three or four, I don't even remember anymore, really cryptic photos that we did a breakdown on this pod. We did it uh, as a daily on the YouTube channel, and you just can't see anything, right? It's like four cryptic photos where it's, it's blurry. And as far as we know... Those are that's it, right? Like that's a, that that's all the proof. So it's like, oh well, this was this was fraudulent. Like this didn't this didn't add up. It wasn't fraudulent, but it was you yeah. know it was just cryptic. Um, yeah, none of none of us personally or Nick Mooney thought it was an indisputable evidence of a thylacine. Correct. And we said Correct. as much online, and then Neil has come after us, tried to get our YouTube channel, uh, had videos taken down, stuff like that, and yep. made a made a cartoon of Forrest. I don't think we've ever <laughs> still said anything really bad about the guy, except our opinions. Correct. No, I, I still stand by everything I've said about him in the beginning, which is good for you for trying to find something and protect, uh, you know, protect the environment. I still stand by that. But anyway, he got really upset, started like, yeah, trying to take down our YouTube and, and doing a really funny cartoon that Ratep thought was going to upset me that I, I can't really remember it, but I was running away well, from then, the kangaroo. But, it was hold great. On. but now what's real happened? Quick, hold Ratep? on, hold on, hold on for us. Yeah. Re real quick. So the last time we talked about it, Basically, I came, we came to the conclusion, in our opinion, this is what he's doing and the way he's behaving to the criticism about his pictures. He's, 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 he's basically insulting people, calling them morons, calling us frauds. And we basically agreed that it's bad for the thylacine, which the whole point of the group is to bring awareness to the thylacine that these still exist so that Australia will fund research so that we can find these things and see if they actually are still out there. So okay. that so was what's where we now, left Ritesh, it last that, time. that got you so upset. And I, I agree with you. This is, this is pretty, this is pretty messy, but what has happened to Okay. So in the ongoing saga, 
recently some pictures came out and some there's been some uh, call it hearsay call it whatever you want there's a picture that came out that looks like it's from the exact same sequence of trail cam images that the original quote unquote baby thylacine pictures that the group released were uh, that's, that's not that, it that's not that tortoise right so <laughs> here's here's the picture that came out and and they were it's claimed that this picture was intentionally omitted from the sequence of of original images that were released by the group and the reason that's purported that this is the case is that it's clear that it's a cat i mean it, the evidence is overwhelming that it does not look like a thylacine in when you include the missing picture in that sequence of pictures well because so, it's from the same trail camera so you can see there wills pulled up a sa- side by side picture on the left is the one that that the uh, thylacine what is it taga thylacine group awareness awareness group whatever said that it was definitively a baby thylacine from the exact same trail camera you know different time of day but obviously the same camera on the right is a nice striped kitty cat and so by omitting the picture on the right and saying we we're pretty positive about the picture on the left it doesn't really uh help their cause does it now so this was uh, apparently it was, uh, another thylacine group has, has put this out. Um, someone uh, also sent it out to some other biologists saying that this was temporarily posted on the thylacine awareness groups page or something like that uh, and then taken down. But purportedly this is from the same series of pictures and was intentionally omitted, even though it undeniably describes a, a, a cat in my opinion. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, we don't know. These pictures came out. We're just looking at them and they look similar to me. And, uh, you know, again, just bad, in my opinion, bad for the thylacine, bad for thylacine research. And it's fucking bullshit. And he's calling us a fraud. He's calling you a fraud. Uh, I think that's a little bit of fucking hardcore projection, if you ask me. Calling so, you a fraud, me? Yeah, that's what he's oh. commenting on uh, in the comments. He's fucking oh, saying all kinds. Co- yeah, it's a, I don't even know why, by the way, because because you uh, you offered him a hundred dollars to use a picture you wanted to use on Extinct or Alive or some some ridiculously mundane normal Probably. thing. Yeah. yeah, so right on. So, cool. So yeah, here's a thought though. It, it, you know, look, this is not any sort of indisputable evidence. Is it possible? that a, a common, you know, feral cat could have been on the same trail camera as something that was not that, of course it's possible. Um, yeah. so I don't know, man, you know, we have to be careful about what we say, unfortunately, because you know, fuck, you know, we don't want our YouTube taken down or anything like that. And people can it's mess so- with your shit. Yeah, I, I think it's, we're it's, to say a lot more than we're saying. In other words, listen, I've I've said enough. This new evidence is out there. Everybody has it in their hands. They can see it with their own eyes and form their own opinions about it. It's just it's a little <laughs> fucking suspicious, in my opinion. Look so. at Ritep. Read what Billy Wiggle Weigel just wrote. He says, "I'm a professional photologist, and I can <laughs> say with 100 percent accuracy this picture shows someone with a huge <laughs> ego." And flaccid genitals. Listen, <laughs> that's his opinion. I, I can't definitively say yes or no to that. All right. People are, I'm are so entitled bo- to their I'm own so opinions. I'm so bored of this story. Yeah, I got so excited I know, I know. by it. I'm gonna gonna say. I figured we'd touch on it. The pictures no, are out there. Check them good. out yourselves. Form yeah. your own opinions. Last, last thing I'm going to say is that uh, it just ple- pleased me to no end that when my cat popped in in front of the camera that multiple Brosners know my fucking cat's name. It is so funny. Lemley has made numerous appearances on the podcast. (laughs) That is fantastic. Um, Absolutely. Uh, So Forrest, hey, real quick, something happened here the other day. This this bastion of wildlife that is Studio City, California. So so this is fun. So uh, I, out behind me here, I close the curtains because it's sunny. I'll let both my cat and dog outside at night, you know, whatever. They can't get out. They, they hang out back there. They always come back in. But okay. usually, if I close the glass door, the dog just kind of hangs out on the patio and the cat is over in the bushes somewhere. Yeah, so I, I, I'm looking out and pouring myself a glass of wine, and I see neither animal in the backyard. I'm like, where the okay. fuck are they? What are they doing? 
And so okay. I'm going to the door to open it to figure out what they're doing together somewhere, right? Because there's little alleys by the side of the house where they could be in there, and that's the sure. only place I wouldn't see them. I'm like, this is weird because okay. they're never together. I look as just as my hand is going to the handle, I see a fucking skunk just dart across the oh, yard. Oh, boy. Yep. <laughs> with, Please tell me it's sprayed the area. Dude, Please. With both the cat and dog together in hot pursuit, but neither of them are sprinting after the skunk. They're just kind of jogging after the oh, skunk. Boy. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. We got, <laughs> dude, so I ripped the door. I'm like, ah! Both of them stopped, came in, at, like, you know, I kind of ran out a little bit. They both like kind of came towards me. I was like, ah, get inside. I'm like trying to usher them inside. Oh, the no. skunk unleashes from the side of my yard an unholy cloud of stink fart. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> and I like get the animals inside. It was literally like Will Smith running from an explosion. Like get them inside, <laughs> shut the door, like just as the stink cloud hits the glass. It was fucking ridiculous. But it made me wonder. Because I didn't one of your dogs get hit by a skunk once? Oh, uh, five or six different times. Okay. Yeah, no, it's happened to me a ton. Um, Damn. No, my dog's not here. He was here earlier. Um, that's what I was going to ask you. So your dogs didn't get tagged. Your dog was, or cat. Neither I got was tagged. like maniacally like smelling all over them, like smelling myself. Oh, no, you know. We didn't you don't get need hit. to do that. We didn't oh, get my hit. God, no. But you could smell okay, it, so dude. It was coming through like the minuscule crack under the door. It was so strong. Oh, I thought yeah. I was going to have to throw out my furniture. Oh, dude, straight up. No, I had it way worse than that. Like, oh, God, I don't even know where to begin. So the worst one, our dog Chester, um, he, yeah, he was the best dog, little guy. I miss him dearly. But um, he, he wanted to play with everything, everything. He was the friendliest. Patrick, you remember him. He was the friendliest, right. cuddliest little dog. Like, he just wanted to play. He was no, no, not an aggressive bone in his body. Anyway, one night, we're heading down to the house. And uh, just parked the car, and he hops out of the car with me. And I just see this, like, white tail just go trotting off. And I'm like, oh, a skunk. And as it clicked into my brain what I had seen, I looked down at Chester, and he's just full bore as fast as he can sprint. Like, friend! Like, running at the skunk. And he runs up to the skunk at full speed. Doesn't even slow down. Like, like it's another dog to play with. And the skunk just turns around pops up onto its front legs, lifts its tail, and just hammers him. I mean, six inches away at most. Point oh, blank. God. Here's the dog. Dude. Now, this, oh, this is a dog that has, like, three-inch long hair. You know, like, it's just, oh. I mean, he's he's covered, dude. He is covered. And brute, it's... Fruit, fruit. I don't even know. So it gets worse. So you guys know my driveway goes down, and then my house is right there. Yeah. So as I get down there, Jess opens the door, and Chester sees her, and I'm literally about to, like, grab him and scream. And he's like, Mom! And runs over and launches into the house and starts rubbing himself on the couch. Like, he's like, oh, oh I'm home, you know? Oh, my God. Yes, yeah. of course. Anyway, long story short, couch, <laughs> trash, gone. Not kidding. Like, $1,200 oh, yeah. <laughs> mistake. Yeah, no, yeah. it's gone. Oh, couch God. gone. Dog shaved <laughs> down to the skin. Like, literally naked mole rat style oh, dog. Brutal. And then oh, threw out brutal. the clippers that shaved, the, shaved him, threw out my clothes that had to shave him with, and bathed the dog in a concoction of ketchup, vinegar, dish soap, and I think hydrogen peroxide about 15 times. Still had skunk smell in the bed that night because it was not. I mean, it was it, like it, this like five second act turned into a week-long battle of nausea in our house. Like, it was just, it was insane, man. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, it's... it's you got lucky, it, boy. The skunks Real have lucky. this sulfuric... It's a, it's a sulfur-based organic compound called theols yep. that, boy, oh, boy, if, if I could take an animal Oil. superpower, I would yeah. fucking take that shit. That is dope. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, what would you do if Lemley got sprayed by a skunk? I mean, you you what do you, you can't really it, bathe it, a cat like a new cat. I mean, you can't. I would have to get new a cat. Literal, I'd have to go on eBay and get a chainmail suit that knights <laughs> wore to give her a bath in tomato sauce or whatever the fuck you do, and Dude, just cry and just get angry crazy. and threaten to move. It's it's so bad, man. It's and it's like I don't mind the smell. Like you drive by a hit one on the road or whatever, and you get a whiff of it, and you're like, yeah, it's not that bad. When it's concentrated like that, and it, I mean, it's it's nauseating. Like your eyes water, your your lips pucker. It's terrible. I mean, it's just it's beyond disgusting. 
Yeah, that's what happens every time I see Pat for the first time. In a and, and a quick and just a quick thing, by the way, this is entirely fenced in. Neither the cat or dog could possibly escape. The skunk got in somehow. And I know skunks aren't known for being particularly good climbers. So I, I'm kind of baffled. I'm wondering if maybe my neighbor threw the skunk over the fence. <laughs> do you, then your what neighbor do you would think? smell like my dog. <laughs> yeah, true. Do, what do you think uh, skunk skunk fart would taste like? You think you'd survive it? I think oh, technically I've, it's piss, right? It's not actually a fart. I think it's a piss. It's an it's oilish oil. liquid. I don't. It's neither piss nor fart. I mean, it's it's an own it's its own liquid that is. What would you do? You could never. I mean, you would just have to deal well, with it for months. I wasn't going to tell the story because it's pretty awful, but I can tell you exactly what it tastes like. I'm not <laughs> oh kidding. my goodness! I swear to God. So we used to trap raccoons in one of our job sites because meso predators are a problem for western pond turtles. Swear to God. Mm -hmm put a trap out one time and we cover them in bushes and hide them. Right. So that the animals are more likely to go into these little cage traps. Well, one of we caught dozens, if not hundreds of raccoons, nobody expected a skunk, but one day, well, at least I didn't one day literally went over there, pulled the bushes apart within one second, just a tiny little skunk spray right in the face. Didn't even hit me in the clothes, but I swear yes. to God, I'm not lying. Got a little bit right on my lips, in my mouth. Uh, had to shave my beard. In fact, Patrick wants to ask me when was the last time you shaved your beard. That was the last time I shaved my beard. Shaved my beard. Uh, skunk stunk in the face. Like, I almost shaved my eyebrows because it was so bad. Um, oh, God. Yeah. No, it was literally, like, just literally, it was a little spray, but it was just, like, right, right here. Um yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Bergwald said that they're very good diggers, so now I need to fucking go check the entire perimeter for a hole in the fence. Dude, so you, the got a, escape. you got yep. a brood of skunks just plotting your demise <laughs> around the house, dude. Um, <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk some more news. I feel like there's some good stuff right. this week. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, so one of my favorite things, everybody knows this, is when something rare, extinct, missing, lost, gets rediscovered. Now, in New Zealand, there is a herpetologist named Ben Barr. He spent years literally flipping logs and rocks looking for the cupola. Now, the cupola is a gecko, a cupola gecko, I should say, that was first described in 1968 in the scrub uh, of an area called Cupola Hut in the Traverse Range. Now, nearly 40 years after that first sighting, another one was found in Nelson Lakes National Park, another area of New Zealand, in 2007. Now, since then, I think, or, you know, since reading about this, uh, Ben Barr just went batshit crazy looking for this gecko. And wouldn't you know it, has the happiest of endings because just this week, Ben Barr finally on his gazillionth rock that he flipped over, I imagine, um, <laughs> found this undiscovered species of gecko that, Whoa. you know, basically wow. had only been seen twice before, had been described in 1968, and then found again in 2007 cryptically and there it is sure enough we talked about this one. as a possible extinct or alive season three kind of thing where different know. gecko different gecko oh in New different one yeah different how, how big is this thing it tiny, looks gigantic tiny. It's, okay no it's not it's Weird. a little guy i mean maybe not that small but it's not big but i just thought this was so rad especially because i i don't know i'm sure it says it in the article how many cool years animal. he spent looking for it but it wasn't it wasn't like uh you know hey we're gonna give this a couple weeks like he went nuts for this thing, um and he did it he, he figured it out That's he found right. it yeah and it's pretty funny because I don't know Will can you pull up the picture of Ben with the gecko he's just like he's kind of got that Alex Honnold smile when Alex gets to the top of uh top of the mountain uh, top of El Cap and he's just like yeah I did it you know <laughs> it's like so so like I, yeah, I don't even know how to say it. he's just, yeah, he's like nonchalant yeah. about the thing that he accomplished that like no one else in the world has ever been able to. I don't know, it's rad. I like Typical I'm just scientist. stoked on it. Typical yeah, look scientist, at him. Man. Isn't that isn't yeah. that an Alex Honnold look where he's just like, got yeah. it? You know? <laughs> Dude, I, I gotta tell you, I just rewatched Free Solo. Uh man, in the last definitely in the last few days. Okay. I just kinda nice. put it on as background noise, I was thinking, and then watched the whole thing. Yeah. That dude has something different about something really really different about his dna oh no yes. because when you yeah. watch 100%. that final climb and then they cut down to the support team and the camera guys those guys are losing their fucking minds and they are sure they're about to see someone they know die right and yeah. he's Absolutely. like he gets to that one point across the hardest thing he's like ah, cool got it <laughs> yeah my my favorite part of that whole documentary is when he just hops up to the top and he's like, Hey guys. 
And like, yeah. he's got no equipment, nothing. And people are just like, Fuck me. And then, <laughs> yeah. like a, guy, a guy with no like rope, no nothing, just a bag of chalk. He's like, and he just like hops over the edge. 3000 feet, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. By the way, G- Gabriel Vermette just said in the chat that just hearing free solo makes his hands sweat. My hands oh, I know are exactly super, what he means. Dude, yeah. mine are currently sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know makes me yeah. ill-equipped for climbing that Don Wall or whatever the fuck you climb. <laughs> Not the Don Wall. Dude, yeah. I mean, it, it's crazy to think. Like, can you imagine, Forrest, you could probably relate more than anyone. I mean, you do this, but with animals, not just like heights and craziness. But like, you have to have literally no amygdala to be able to to be able to do this like you're, you're talking about hours of just potential death minute second by second like it's fucking like you're right the, the dna has to be different missing amygdala for real dude no yeah i mean can i relate to it i think so but that said i would never climb yeah. this thing but i'm also not capable of that you know i but, bet alex Honnold you, would yeah. never tackle a king cobra so you right, know I right. think exactly I, I think it's just a different skill set so i i guess i i believe that i understand what he's going through what happens with me and i I think patrick's probably witnessed this you know is what happens with me is i get so hyper focused on the thing that i'm doing when it's a particularly dangerous animal or whatever it is i get so hyper focused on that thing that nothing Mm -hmm. else in the entire world exists and i try and Like during that time of hyper focus, when I'm handling like, you know, say a snake that I'm not really comfortable with because I haven't had a ton of experience with them or a super big croc or something like that. I'm almost like, and I think Alex Honnold was probably doing this. I'm trying to think two steps ahead. So it's like where it's not just reactive. It's like proactive. You're putting your hands in the place. And I'm sure this is relative to rock climbing too, where you think the animal, or in this case, the climb is going to be a second from now versus waiting till the animal is kind of moving and just reacting to it. So I don't know. It's, it's hard Mm -hmm. to explain, I guess, but no, uh, it's, it's interesting that you said that because actually in the documentary, he literally kind of says almost nearly an identical thing about like his process and how he's basically obsessed with the problem solving aspect of it like like a game of chess like like planning it out and 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 like doing it and then and then he said that that kind of obviously eliminates quite a bit of the fear being that prepared for something like that so i mean it 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 seems to be uh it it seems to be common it's not really a no amygdala thing it's more like a uh preparedness thing well i guess i don't Uh, you know i love the joke don't get me wrong i love the tank top I don't have no amygdala. I feel fear. I really do. I just like manage it. I don't know how else to say it. Like I I don't get scared when I hold a snake, but like, you know, I've been climbing super high things and felt like, oh shit, this is scary. Like I better not slip or, you know, things like that. So I definitely feel the fear. I think it's just how you manage it. Um, Quick question that honestly, I don't know the answer to what is, you know, so in Free Solo, he has that one section that they build up to that's the scariest section, the most likely that he would fall to his death. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the big section. It was the scariest moment for him of his life. What was the, let's say just during either Extinct or Alive or the Shark Weeks, what was the scariest moment Ooh. for our projects that you've had? Uh, including, let's say, as a producer on the, the other show. Yeah, sure. And have you ever shit your pants? Was it handling the cobra in Vietnam? Was it no, one of the snakes in Australia? Good yeah. I think the moment that was the most touch and go was the moment with the rhino and Mitch in Zimbabwe. Because it sure. wasn't necessarily me that was going to get flattened, but I didn't know. So, okay. Usually, like with the cobra in Vietnam and all these other situations, I'm in control of the situation, at least a little bit, right? Like I can decide to hold the snake or put down the snake, right? Or I can decide to swim at the shark or swim away from the shark, etc. I had no control in the Mitch situation. So there we were, 15 feet away. Rhino was locked onto Mitch. And I just said to Mitch, don't move or we're going to die, right? And if Mitch had just been like, fuck you, I'm out of here and bailed, that was it. Right. So like I had absolutely no control (laughs) over that situation, but to just like hope for the best. And I think that was that was the most touch and go. Like he had the decision. It was totally up to Mitch 
whether he was going to run or whether he was going to stay put. It was totally up to the Rhino whether he was going to charge and flatten us or whether he was going to turn and bolt. And everything had to line up for neither of those to happen. So I think that was uh, that was the situation. Pat, what about you? What, what was your scariest moment? Good Lord. Well, uh, because I'm never handling dangerous animals or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you're there. You're around all this crate insanity. Trying to think like what I mean, for me personally, it was literally standing on a, a, at the top of a I can't remember 75 foot steel ladder in a cave in Vietnam. Oh, that cave. Uh, yeah, that was pretty gnarly. <laughs> that, that part was just personally very scary because I was waiting for uh, someone else to climb up. And so I was just perched atop this 75 foot ladder forever, it seemed like. <laughs> uh, as far as like with wildlife, I can't think of a time. I mean, sometimes I'm just scared that Forrest is going to get killed. And I'm thinking about all the paperwork that'll be involved <laughs> and all the phone calls. All of dude. that shit. Dude, I'll tell yeah. you what, dude, in Fernandina yeah. Island for Forest. Yeah. Uh, when the tortoise was literally getting handed off oh, yeah, from between boats. At the, between from mm -hmm. the land into the dinghy, our producer Justin, and you do see it in the show. We don't make a meal out of it because that's not what it was about at that point. Yeah. Our producer Justin grabs it, and there's huge swells coming in and raising. And it's making this handoff of this precious specimen super difficult. If yeah. that tortoise had gone into the water, we would have all had to kill ourselves instantly. Oh, we would have all had you to just commit suicide. Uh, and so there's a moment where Justin grabs it, and this huge swell comes, and he has one end of the gurney that they made, and he almost falls into the water, and. I mean, it was like if his center of gravity was three inches farther to the right, he was totally. In. Totally. probably yeah. pulling the tortoise in and both of them were gone dead. Yeah, it yeah. was. I agree. That was that was very sketchy. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's interesting. It's interesting because it's almost like everything comes back to a uh, like having control. It's like if you don't have control, it's fucking scary. It doesn't yeah. matter the situation, you yeah, know? Yeah, for sure. So, yep. like, even if you're looking from afar, like the thing with Forrest and Mitch in that – by the way, somebody called it a Mitch-uation. When someone <laughs> named Mitch <laughs> – Dude, nice. it, that's it's great. great. Yeah. Did, when who, someone named who Mitch – Who came up with that? That was Dr. Hyena. Long that, time fan. Dude, it's a, a mitch-ation. It's, it's when someone, someone else is in a dangerous situation and you don't have control. It's a mitch-ation. It's a mitch <laughs> That's good. so good. Oh, my I God. Love it. T-shirt yeah, question yeah. mark. Um, oh yeah, another shirt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what uh, was real quick, Forrest? What was the the super dangerous snake in Northern Australia? The Taipan, like, the Taipan yeah. that crawled over my neck. <laughs> that gave me the heebie-jeebies for sure. Um, what? Oh, the heebie -jeebies. Is it because is, is it a poisonous ass snake or it's what? Venomous it's thing. It's venomous. venomous. Um, yeah, Fuck well, you actually, two. not true. There God some damn it. Yeah, the uh, the Taipan was gnarly. Long story short, we're in Australia. We're uh, in this Aboriginal village. I'm interviewing this guy about uh, moon tigers, which are thylacine. Uh, and all of a sudden, there's like screaming out in the distance, right? And I'm like, oh shit, like just knowing what it is in Australia, I grab my snake hook, sprint over there. There's this guy with a cinder block over his head about to smash a snake. And it's, it's a coastal taipan, one of the most dangerous snakes in the world, right? And I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Like literally like ran underneath the guy and stopped him from smashing the snake with the cinder block. And as I do that, the snake turns and bolts under this guy's like elevated house. You know those houses that are on like three foot kind of blocks to keep them off the ground so it gets too wet, blah, blah, blah. Um... Anyway, the guy's, like, annoyed because now there's a lethal snake underneath his house. And he didn't get to smash <laughs> it with the cinder block. And, um, you know, and I'm like, I'll take care of it. Like, I'm, you know, like, I got it. So long story short, snake's under the house. I grab my light, my headlamp, and I start looking around. I see the, house, the snake's, like, over here, and I cruise in. And I'm, like, belly crawling because it's, like, two feet tall. And I'm trying to get, Smart. like, wrangle the snake. Yeah, in this, like, super, <laughs> like, dank, dingy area under this house with a bunch of wooden boards where the snake's like disappearing under a board and then popping up 15 feet, you know, further down the board. And I have no idea where it is. Um, terrifying. And uh, snakes, and, but I, honestly, I wasn't even scared at all because I'm like, snake's over here, I go over there, and then the snake's over there, and I go over there. Anyway, lose sight of the snake altogether on one of these little escapades, right? And so I'm like, shit, where did it go? Well, the last place I saw it was like right over in this corner right here. And there's like stairs. There's like three stairs right by that. So I'm going to go stick my head through the stairs and see if I can find the snake. 
So I walk <laughs> over to where those stairs are, lay flat on my belly, and pop my head through the stairs, right? I put, put my, I've got my headlamp on, so I'm looking for the snake. So I turn, turn my head this way, right? And I don't see anything. And I'm just about to start turning my head this way, and I just feel this. Oh, my God. And I just freeze right there. So there is a taipan Ew. on my oh, neck oh my next God. to my jugular. And I, I, I'm legit. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because it still gives me the heebies Ugh. every time. And uh, long story short, I just froze because if I twitched or, or moved fast or anything, undeniably would have bitten me. Of course, the camera guys got like a little bit of it, but it's not like they could see my neck jammed under the uh, under the stairs. Anyway totally terrifying moment the snake crawls it was about a nine foot long snake eight foot long snake all the way over my neck and keeps Holy cruising shit. along underneath the house and as soon as it's you know like three feet away from me i pull out and like my heart is racing with adrenaline and then the snake bolts from under there a moment later and i go over and grab it and it's like a big to do and then we kind of move it off away from the guy's property but that like I don't even know, two-ish seconds of the snake, one and a half seconds slithering over my neck, knowing I had a taipan on my neck. Somebody asked me what, uh, in an interview once, they said, what would you have done if that snake had bitten you? And I would have simply got out from under the stairs, looked at the camera, said, guys, please film this, recorded a message for my family, lay down, and waited to go. Because there is nothing. We were 14, oh. 15 hours from a hospital in the middle of the book. I mean, there was just nothing oh my, that could have been done. Is- yeah. <laughs> I got goose gum, goose, that's goose gum, right? That's, that's fruit brute. Uh, that is fruit brute. <laughs> right, so Hoogie Buns in the chat, this is a cool question. What animal, he's like, I'm curious, or she, or neither. What animal that actively hunts humans is the scariest? So let me just, I'm going to limit I know the it. answer. Zero right. question. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, limit it first. I was going to say, I'm going to limit it to, and I guarantee someone's going to be like, that's not true. But... We know that there are cases where lions have been man eaters. Yep. Tigers have been man eaters. Leopards, especially, have been man eaters. Yep. Polar bears and large crocodilians. Yep. Uh, which one is the scariest animal that will hunt you down if it's hungry? R- Retep goes first, <laughs> then Patrick, okay. and I'll give mine. I think it's easy. Oh, I mean, dude, honestly, uh, fucking pack of wolves, man. That, they, that's but they terrifying. don't hunt humans, boy. Oh, well, never well, never been documented. I just told you the animals. I, I just listed them. Are you mental? <laughs> I'm reading the comments. Sorry. Fuck it. List the animals one more time. Quickly. Lion, fast, fast. Lions, tigers, leopards, polar bears, crocodile, large crocodilians. All right. I'm going tigers. fucking, I'm going leopards. Leopards. You're just, you're just naming one to name one? You're going to give any reason? No, leopards. That? I'm scared of them. They're fast. They can, he's thinking, they can he's, th- th- he's thinking of cheetahs. Okay. Don't give me that look for us. <laughs> F off. Thinking of cheetahs, everybody. Well, I am. I'm thinking of I know what a cheetah, is. the cheeto <laughs> spokesperson. I hope you both get killed by a fucking polar bear. Fuck off. Cheers, mates. All right, mine, because I'm not the biologist or the broologist, I'm going to say polar bear, and I think it's pretty easy. Look, if I had to handle one, I'd be dead no matter what. So... Let's not split hairs between a large Nile crocodile and a polar bear. Both he are killing you say. easily. Yep. The, my point is, I'm not going in the area where there are large Nile crocodiles near the water line because I know they're there. A polar yeah. bear, I have been in their territory. I've been hiking through their territory in northern Greenland. I was scared the entire time. <laughs> There's nothing you could do. So Patrick obviously knew where I was going to start arguing about this. Um, and he's spot on. So it's Nile Crocodile for me, zero question. I grew up around them. I've seen a few of them that have turned into man, <laughs> man eaters. Here's the thing about them. There is something that happens. I, I don't think salties are nearly as smart as Nile Crocodiles. All, all the Australian brothers be like, saltwater crocodiles. They're way tougher. They're not. Um, Cayman, Cayman or pansies, like, you know, there's all these other, like, soft crocodilians. Uh, alligators are, are literally nothing. Um, Nile Crocodiles have this thing, same with like what happened with Gustav, and if nobody's familiar with the story of Gustav, he was a man-eating crocodile that got bigger and bigger and bigger. But the thing is, they know, two, there's two parts to why they're the scariest. One is, they know when they're being hunted and can disappear, vanish. Literally, I mean, if you look at how many times the big famous hunter went to try and kill Gustav, I think it took him 14 years or something wild like that. Because... This crocodile That's would it. kill people and vanish from the face of the earth. And they can do that. And they are so cryptic and amazing. Number two, 
the reason they're so scary is the reason the the thing about them is they have to like you have to go to the water in those environments in the places where crocodiles become man eaters the entire livelihood is based on the river right so you have to go down to the river to get water you have to go down to the river to catch your fish right. So it's not like you can just choose to be like, yeah, no more river. It's like you have to get water every single day. And the right. crocodiles recognize those patterns and just get there and, and, and they know exactly what to do. I don't know. They're just like a whole other level to me. Yeah, they're well, crazy. Also, also, by the way, you know, Gustav, for those who don't know the story, is in uh, probably saying it wrong, Burundi? Burundi, yeah. Burundi. Mm -hmm. uh, Gustav had over 300 people that he ate. Yeah. One that animal. Is <laughs> so and, then, and, and and without being caught, like that's I mean three hundred, and then eventually look at the size of that thing. Are you fucking? Imagine if me? that thing, it, its only interest was eating you, and your yeah. only way Dude. of washing, getting water and food Anything. was going to where travel, that thing transport. was. Transport. Usually, these that's villages on these rivers, the only way to travel from the villages is by canoe. Yeah, I'm I'm changing my vote. I, I go with, with crocodiles. Well, Retep, I was just about to give you such credit because there's so many famous man-eating leopards. Uh, most specific, most of them are in India, and there's one of the big national forests in India is named after Jim Corbett, who is a British hunter that numerous times came in yeah. yep. to track and kill these man-eating leopards. Even one when he was a very old man, leopards can get the taste for human flesh and start only eating humans and it's happened numerous times and they're famous fairly recent cases of it all right well, i'm back to leopards so, all right, so last thing last thing yeah the most famous man eater of all time that that has the most confirmed human deaths that it killed what animal do you think it was just quick on this uh i oh. think it was the lions from the railway system ghost in the darkness it, i'm blanking on their names it was the the savo man eating lions in yeah, Kenya savo lion. is a good yeah. guess that's fifth on the list with 135 oh, wow. kills. That's still so many. <laughs> I have number no one? idea. Just tell no, us. Number one was the Champawat tiger. Ah, uh, uh, yes. I've heard of this. Yep. Nepal. That's right. Which killed 436 people. And famously, our, our boy Jim Corbett, again, was called in and he tracked it and killed it after it killed 436 people. Jace, yeah. Jason Abb says, now featured in Chicago's Field Museum. I don't know if that's a joke or not. No, no. The, in the Field Museum are the lions from Savo, not the tiger. Well, maybe the oh, tiger, okay. but I've seen them. Gotcha, I've been gotcha. to the Chicago Field Museum to see the lions. Hey, well, can that's you pull cool. that picture so that we could see Jim Corbett's face? Because I, I, he's just a, a fascinating character um, and that he would numerous times, he something about him made him the literal the only person in the world that could help these villages in india and nepal numerous yeah. times when they like what what do you think it would be that would make someone so good at tracking animals I, I, and it's sad I that the think, animals had to die obviously like, no but it's know, a no different a I, I you know and this is like that whole like rewriting history type thing it was a different time and place in the world like don't is it well, sad that he killed them yes no it is but it was a different time in the world, man. Like you called in the British, you know, uh, what do you call it? Colonist hunter, you know, with the pith helmet and the cocky shorts. And like, that's what they I, like. I think he's a legend. Like I really do. And a hero, not for killing the animals, but the fact that he could track down these things that nobody else could track down, find them when nobody else could find them, use crazy methodology, uh, uh, you know, use uh, just like the craziest ideas and structures and methods to find them. I don't know. I think he's amazing. Like, I, would I like him to go out and kill all these animals now? Of course not. But it was a total different time in the world, and he was very skilled. Well, I mean, the other thing is, is, you know, humans, we're still animals. Like, if we're being hunted, like, our power is being able to, uh, we're social. We get together. We find the person that's the best at doing the thing to protect us, and we have them do it. It's not like we could fist fight a tiger or a leopard and, like, win. So we have to use what we can use to protect ourselves. And I fucking love animals. But aside from it just being like the time thing, like if there's an animal that's killing hundreds of people in a community, like, you know, we're not like people aren't just going to yeah. sit around and do nothing. If a tiger yeah. takes 436 people from a, a small village in Nepal, that's probably half the village. Right.
And I also for want to everyone point out you've ever Corey, met. Yeah, I also want to point out that he became like many PHs that I knew in Zimbabwe that grew up as big hunters. He became like a world-renowned conservationist. He like right. killed too many things, felt sorry about it. I've seen this firsthand. In fact, I, I know very close family friend is one of these people. Killed way too many things, felt and it's, um, you know, it's like when you're, how do you explain it? Growing up in Africa, when you're young and full of testosterone and you're like 18, 20, 22, whatever, you just want to kill the biggest thing and be the toughest. I think the same thing happens everywhere in the world. And then you like realize what you've done is pretty shitty and you try and like make amends for it by becoming a conservationist. And I, I've, I've seen that firsthand in Southern Africa. I don't think it applies here as much, but um, I think that's probably the same thing that, ha I don't know. It's just like, it's kind of a natural progression for these big hunters to end up going into conservation. Yeah. Here, here's a, here's a good question from uh, Brody Chappelle. Let's say there is a zoo and an animal got out. What would be the worst animal to escape the zoo in your opinion? And that would do the most damage. So let's say, let me just amend this question. It's like sure. the zoo's in the middle of a city and it doesn't just get out of its enclosure. It's now running loose in the middle of the city hub yeah, yeah, on a yeah. Friday right. night as people yeah. are waiting outside of popping nightclubs to get Fresh in. Fresh out. Nobody knows it's out. The news has not hit. It's just in the fucking streets doing its thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the worst possible animal is like a bat with COVID virus, but I think... <laughs> to play... That's as bad as my herpes answers. Yeah, <laughs> no, but to play the game, it's, it's you know, it's it's like... It's an elephant, like a big upset Ooh, African elephant. Call. You know, good it's just going to, people were saying it in the, <laughs> yeah. the comments, but I totally agree. I mean, it's just going to, it's going to flatten cars. I mean, elephants do this and they're doing it in Mozambique literally right now. There are some rogue elephants there that are, you know, they go through a village and it's not like they're there to kill people. They're just panicked and freaking out. And when you have a panicked African elephant, oh, you know, yeah. forget about it. What about, yeah. what about baboons though? Because because yeah. you're wild is saying that that they they they're hyper aggressive, adaptable, live in huge groups. They're also I guess pretty. It, they're they're when a baboon is scared, it runs and hides. When an elephant is scared, it tears through stuff. It's a whole different thing. A, a scared elephant is like a stampede of of five hundred humans running out of a theater that's on fire. <laughs> pretty much just yeah. one elephant. <laughs> yeah. What's yours, Retep? What the zoo escape animal? Yeah. Shit. I mean, I don't know shit about this, but I'm going to go with the uh, with the baboons. But it would have to be a group of baboons, right? Because I feel like it was just one. Forrest is probably right. It'd run away. It wouldn't want to. But if it was like six baboons, a family of baboons with maybe a young one, it would be, they would be out there fucking just hyper aggressive. They'd want food. They'd be on, you know, the San Diego fucking boulevard there coming down fucking – Boom, stealing your food, attacking your kids, your wife, your <laughs> Yo baboons on the loose. <laughs> yeah, that's a horrible answer. You're an idiot. You'll steal your iPhone. What's, hey, what's yours? Fuck you, pet. Yeah, what's yours that you've been Googling for 20 minutes now? Uh, I was. I was. But my, the, I that, know you were. That <laughs> line of logic didn't work. I was trying to find something with a super quick reproduction. What, the line cycle. of logic where you're not paying attention because you're Googling? Idiot. I would say a Nutria yeah. rat. I mean, Nutria rats are horrific in appearance. They have pink teeth. Uh, <laughs> they're gigantic rats. They reproduce quickly and they destroy ecosystems like we've seen in the bayou near Louisiana. They cause hurricanes to do more damage by killing all the saplings. I, I don't want any Nutria rat anywhere fucking near me. I'll take a skunk spray in the face instead of a Nutria rat encounter. It's, it's, it's an interesting pick because you, you're identical in appearance to a Nutria rat. I know, rat. I know. <laughs> Guys. What about a hippo? Yeah, what, what? 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 I was trying to remember, and this is like, this is get a little BTS for the Brosners here. The other day, we had a great idea for a battle royale. Do you remember what it was? It was like, was it, was it going to be a movie or something, Patrick? It was your idea. We had a great oh, idea. Yeah. What was the premise oh, yeah. of this? Do you remember yeah. what it was? Of course. Okay. Well, then, yeah. in that case, it's, it's time, time for everybody's favorite segment, Battle Royale! Nice. <laughs> Dude, the high pitch falsetto, just beautiful, man. Yeah, it's, it's better different. than Timberlake. Legit. <laughs> All right. Let's so, hear it. I don't remember Look, it. 
you've been assigned to produce a sci-fi film. Okay. Okay. James Cameron is attached to direct. The budget has been appropriated at $600 million to be the biggest budget film ever made. Standard. All right. Okay. But you've only got the next minute and a half to figure out your plot. <laughs> And what's gonna what's what's gonna be required for this sci-fi next smash blockbuster hit is that you take one concept from uh, one concept from the animal kingdom, right? So it could be an animal, could be an animal power, something from the animal kingdom. We're we're making it broad, guys. Don't worry about this. It's gonna yeah. be great. Okay. One concept from the animal kingdom. One concept from uh, like the idea of just like sci-fi and earth that could be based in reality, right? So it can't be like, uh, it can't be like the power of invisibility. It's gotta be like traveling to another planet, something that could happen. Okay, okay. And what was the third thing? You put me on the spot and I didn't write it down. Well, I know, but I didn't thing? remember it. So this is pretty good. I wasn't the, was it? Was was the star of the movie an animal that we had to pick? I don't remember. That's right. I don't remember that's the, right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So so yeah, the star of the movie has to be a certain species. You get yeah. one power or concept oh, from the animal oh, kingdom. Hold on. Let one. me write this down. Are you fucking kidding me? What are you talking about? All right, sorry. Dude, we Go talked ahead. about this two weeks ago. You yeah, we texted utterly about obese piece of shit. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm sorry. Quickly go over it. I'm not even gonna so look that, at the YouTube so live people, people are booing. Can, Okay, so yeah, the battle royale no, they're is not. No, they're not. You, they love you it. pick they love you it. pick an animal star. You're James Cameron directing a movie. You have to have mm -hmm. some kind of sci-fi element, and you have to have some kind of human element, right? Is that right? Am I getting it right, Patrick? So, in I other words, I don't remember. Obviously, pigs, I lied when I said I remember. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. So, in other words, pigs fly and battle aliens, something like that, right? You put together the movie exactly. plot based on exactly. That. So, your animal, the lead character okay. has to be an animal. All right. There has to be a sci-fi element that could right. be possible, and there has to be a yeah, for your plot great. of your $500, $600 million movie. Shut up, John Kuzkazuch. He says this let's battle see, is terrible. See. You don't know what you're talking about. You well, listen, it's going to be good. It. It's right. definitely going to be bonkers and impossible to do entertainingly. I'm going to go first. Uh, yeah, you are. Up, shut up, dude. Go. I literally might X out my window. You're being so annoying and drunk. Um, right. I'm not drunk at all, you ugly rat. Thing so my first yeah. thing yeah. that I'm going to draft, it's a snake draft, yeah. is this, and you, you guys can't take this. It's going to be traveling to another planet. I'm going to save my animal and my other thing for later. It's going to be the idea of being the first thing to land on another planet. And of course, that planet is going to be Uranus because I, it's funny. It gives fun you good say. options for the title, yep. right? You know, it could be called like heinous and Uranus. There's a lot of different <laughs> possible titles. Heinous and Uranus. <laughs> so mine, my, I'm taking the sci-fi concept of traveling and landing in Uranus and nice. then what happens. All right, Forrest, okay. you're next. Okay, great. Fuck you, Pat. Now, you're going to have to tell me if I get DQ'd on this one or not. And if I do, I'll, I'll hone it back. But I'm going to take for my concept... I'm going to go Marvel movie, Avengers style, right? So all the superhero origins come together. But if I can't do that, that because it's too many different animals, let me know and I'll just turn it down to one origin story. Well, let's God. hear it. Well, no, I I'm was just, you, I was just laughing at bro and Roberts. He What's said, Thylacine in the movie starring cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, yeah. So uh, I'm so, doing a su superhero. I wasn't style. even listening because it was no, so I goddamn can tell. funny. I can tell. Just yeah. do it for us. We'll tear it apart. What is Let's it? Let's go. What is it? It's 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 a Marvel style superhero conglomerate adventure. That's what I'm doing. You can, a bunch you can of, draft bunch that. of animals yeah. to batter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can draft that. Yep. All right. Great. Tip. You're up for two. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, I'm going. <clears throat> my setting is down in the bottom of the Marianas Trench, the bottom of the sea. Okay. There are bases that are controlled, and uh, that's my setting. Okay, and now what's your animal? Oh, I get to pick two, that's perfect. Yeah. My animal is obviously what we all know are actually aliens, and it's what we call octopus, but that is not what their true alien name is. Uh, They're called Octafuck Pattis. I, I, <laughs> I gotta say, that's very creative, and I'm like, 
legit said it's not an actual movie, you might win this one. Wait, so so oh, okay. Won. Oh, oh, we might have so to annoying. just we might just have to round these out because it's getting confusing. So, Retep, if you're cool with cha- t- changing it from a snake draft, Patrick, Retep, tell me what your movie is. Cause yeah, got, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just tell me your movie. Yeah, then, yeah. Then, yeah, just just tell me your movie. True. Then Patrick's going to tell me his. Then I'll finish mine because it's getting too confusing. Snake draft in this style. Let's hear your movie. All right. Yeah. So, uh, my. I, Obviously, there's fucking alien bases at the bottom of the sea that we kind of already know about. And I'm talking in real life. We know that there's alien bases down there. And uh, what we don't know is that octopus are, in fact, alien. And they transform into their real alien form when they get into their base. They're merely an octopus form when they come up. And they have a special ability and here's the here's the fucking rub, everybody. Yeah. You think you've go. seen you think you've seen alien craft? They're the fucking craft. The craft Whoa. is alive. Whoa. Everything an alien craft can do, that is an a that is an uh, what we call an octopus. They can they can fire lasers. They can fly above. They can be in water. They can fucking they can they can zip zip defy gravity. <laughs> you said it. All zip, of zip. it. <laughs> And then the rest of the plot obviously would have to be fleshed out, but yeah, it's, it's just know. the log line. Yeah, but yeah. it all starts Good. with the fact that that guy that we watched, or that came out on CNN today, who attacked, viciously assaulted that octopus today on CNN. <laughs> yeah, that's great. how it starts. It's a great okay. movie. Bottom of the Marianas Trench. There's there's alien bases. James Cameron's directing it. We figure out that aliens are super intelligent. They're overlords, and not only. Are they the aliens? They themselves are the spacecraft, and they, they can are fly. the vessel. Wow! Yep, that's a good movie. Most, cr- most creative thing you've come up with in twenty one. Okay, Forrest, what are you gonna do? Fa- go just pitch us, pitch us your movie here. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, yeah. mine's a cop out. I'm not a very original thinker, so I will tell you this. I said it's a. I said it's a like an X Men Marvel origin story. It's this is actually a movie that Patrick and I came up with in the back of a bus once. Smart. My movie is, great. Podcast is one. Lion Man. It's Lion <laughs> Man. So oh, Lion man. man is the story of your hero, Forrest Galante, who goes to Zimbabwe to track down the infamous Cape Lion. While he's there, he manages to dart this giant black-maned lion and draws a blood sample from it. Now, unfortunately, due to a mishap in the Zimbabwean consulate, the paperwork states that Forrest cannot take this vial of blood out of the country but in order for Forrest to prove that the lion has Cape Lion ENA, he has to get the blood out of the country. So what does our hero do? He keisters the vial of blood, right? Sticks it right up in the old prison pocket. Jumps on an airplane, <laughs> hits a little turbulence. You know, oops, shatter. Bang. Bang. There goes the vial of blood. It's absorbed through the colon into Forrest's body. All of Go a sudden, on. Forrest grows a mane, and he becomes the powers <laughs> of the lion. He is Lion Man, and he has to go around the it. world fighting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember who we he's had to fight. Save the Earth. Yeah, oh, that's right. No, no, poachers. poachers. I have to kill poachers. That's, right. that's how the, that's how the movie goes. Uh, I am Lion Man. I land somewhere else in the world for some reason. Tear up the airport like the origin story where the superhero is always bad in the beginning. Figure always. out my powers. Learn to leap. Learn to roar. Learn to growl, and then. Go and target the big poachers and take them down. Lion Man the movie. Boom. Yeah, and you've oh, already good. gotten started on the look. Or, so you already, <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's an easy progression. Commenting on that. Yeah. All right. Pat, how are you going to fucking defeat? Because I thought I won, but actually that was that was a good that was a good I'm, contender. I'm going to make the course. highest. So before Avatar smashed all the records, Titanic was the highest grossing movie in the history of the world. Yep. Another James Cameron film. This will be yep. his third to break even Avatar's record after years bomb. Enough with the fluff. So <laughs> I'm at its core. Titanic was a big budget romance film, right? At its core. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So we've figured out the capabilities to launch a rocket to land on Uranus. We, what we want to do is monitor, could an astronaut survive the trip? Okay. So we're going to be launching an animal into space. Well, it's got heart monitors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We launch a a group of Tarsiers into space (laughs) to land on Uranus. Look how cute they are. Oh, look at Will coming in hot. Yeah, look how cute they are, right? (laughs) 
So yep. we're going to land a group of Tarsiers, which they will be voiced. My lead character will be voiced by Seth Rogen. Great. Um, Phenomenal. <laughs> oh, God. So he's going to play the voice of the lead Tarsier. And what happens when the Tarsiers <laughs> arrive, here's my human element, is that there's a human colony on Uranus. But in Uranus, you just like humans <laughs> mate with another species there that looks just like the Tarsier. Oh, so boy. Now, Seth Rogen, as a Tarsier, is caught up in a case of mistaken identity. Oh, where, boy. Where, by the way, Charlize Theron is his love interest. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so, uh, they did I mean, that. Yeah, they did. Charlize <laughs> Seth Rogen. I'm trying to remember. It was like she was a president or something. I don't know. I love it. It's great. Yeah. And by the way, this, this Forrest, plot it's is more plausible than them falling in love as just two humans. <laughs> correct. Very, very correct. How is it not yeah. great? Ritep, yours is um, phenomenal. They're all great. It's, I think they're it's great. It's pretty good, but it's by far the worst out of the three. It would be and also, by far the most money. Quick. <laughs> just that Seth round. Rogen in it. <laughs> Forrest already, already said his, but if you'd like to change it, now is the time. Bonus round. The title of the movie, I'll start. Mine will simply be called Ocknado. That's right. Pat, yeah. what will yours be called? A, All right, Forrest. A, yeah, his is Lion I'm, Man. I'm Lion Man, yeah. Well, I think yours, Forrest. Key Griffo thinks that yours should be called <laughs> Forrest Galante Special Blood Farts. And I agree. Yep. 100%. That's, mine's that's, just going kind of to kind of be called, mine's going to be a wordplay just called two words, your anus. But picture a full <laughs> screen movie poster of just a Tarsier looking cute. And it just says your anus. That's great. Yeah, that's that's great. I love it. Yeah. It, oh, it is so this well. was a Good. weird battle royale, but it was lots of fun. Was I liked it. I, I, I wish if, if I had a gazillion dollars, if I had Jeff Bezos money, I'd finance all three of these movies just because not from yeah. us because we're not very good at this kind of thing but from a good studio somewhere yeah um, and, <laughs> absolutely and we also said at the beginning that whatever craig gas said on the uh, youtube live would be the who won craig gas said papa p won so there we go oh, yeah i remember that yeah yeah, yeah I remember that oh, you sure. you guys that's ridiculous i'm, kidding. You guys I'm being sarcastic you idiot uh, <laughs> oh god you guys are so fucking ridiculous uh yeah. boy Ritep, give the people the spiel where can they follow us where can they find us if they're not hanging out live tonight what's it all about let's go oh my god you guys go to the wild times podcast.com you can go to the wild times podcast.com forward slash info to get just a nice list of all the links to everything the youtube the audio podcast anywhere itunes uh google the merch is there the Instagram, all the socials, the Wild Times Podcast dot com forward slash info. And, and uh, Ab says the regulars are going to go post game on Discord. So, what? How does that work? Oh, that by the way, a hundred percent go to the Discord. Um, you know what? I'm going to post the actual link in the chat here and in the description of the video because sometimes the link, which is http colon forward slash forward slash Wild Times dot club doesn't work so if that doesn't work look for the link in the chat and i'll post it in the description the actual discord.gg blah 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 whatever the fuck it is and go to the discord we got over 500 in there now there is literally like 60 70 people just bullshitting in there at all times <laughs> it is a good time it's awesome and uh it is yeah. fun and thanks to Zoe Donahue who says I won. People are saying R.I.P. Jenna Mitri. I don't know what happened. Uh, Daniel Cool nah, said she'll be in the around. Discord. All right, good. She's, she's right. around. Oh, I, I, got, I got worried. Yeah. I got worried. Yeah. Shout out. She was working, but uh, Mitri, Jenna, there's your shout. Uh, we missed right. you. I know. And to everyone who just listens and not on YouTube, thank you so much. We hope that we make your commute a little bit sillier and make you a little bit stupider. Uh, sure. Come drink with us on our next YouTube Live. We love you guys. Good night. Good night. Now wait one minute, guys. Oh, I got to end all these.